All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bearded Gear podcast. This is episode number 24 already, two dozen of these in the bag, which is kind of crazy. Um, and I'm excited for this episode. Tonight, I'm joined by my buddy, Brandon. And What's Brandon is also known as Everyday Minimalist. Um, many of you probably know him from YouTube. Many of you may know him from Instagram. A lot more should know him from TikTok. Um, he is huge on that platform, which I'm sure we're going to talk about. But Brandon has become a buddy really within the last like year or so. Uh, we yeah. both started our YouTube channels around the same time. He's bigger mm -hmm. than I am. I blame TikTok for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Brandon, how are you doing tonight, man? Doing pretty all right, man. You know, just uh, finished filming a video. I was editing actually, and then hopped on to this awesome podcast that we got going. So, killer, dude. What were you shooting? Yeah. If I'm not, I don't um, know if so where did it go? I, there's so many knives on the table. Um, it's the Glow Rhino Reactor. So, the what? I mean, I, the Glow Rhino Reactor. Oh, okay. I've seen you find. post about that. Yeah, it's somewhere mm. around here. I'll pull. Oh, here it is. <laughs> right well, pretty I'm in it, right? Yeah this guy right here. So it's been pretty interesting. I got that pre-release. Um, Glorano reached out and they were like, Hey, uh, do you want to check out this new knife? And I was like, sure, this is their yep. first run. So I've used their um, titanium pry bar multiple times and oh, cool. it's been in the collection for like a year now. So yeah, it's been an interesting one. Uh, not the best knife out there. I mean, it, it's the S 35 VN, uh, $235 knife. So yeah. that right there already is just like, okay. Um, uh, I got to be real with this review. So they can't all be winners, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, yeah. That's one of those things today. I shot my full review. Um, by the time that this goes live, uh, like a week from now, um, mm -hmm. so we're doing this on a Wednesday, but right. by the time this goes live, that review will already be live. But today I did my full review of the 80, 20.5. Oh, dude, I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah. The little, so jealous. <laughs> little production Demco's right. And that's, awesome. that's one of those things where it's like, the materials aren't really there for 150 right. bucks, mm -hmm. but the knife has so many redeeming qualities that I'm like, mm -hmm. I'd still pay 150 for it. I, oh, but yeah. it, I also wouldn't it. judge anybody who's like 150 is too much for right, right, freaking plastic and OS 10 a, <laughs> but like, it's not a terrible steel. The plastic feels pretty good for being plastic sure. and it's got a shark lock and it's Demco's first production knife. So it's like, yeah. I, you know, I, I get it. I, I think there's worse value propositions out there, but oh, sure. would it be better if it was 20 CV? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're going to do it eventually. Hopefully. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. But. I, I think as a whole, the industry is kind of being forcibly moved in the direction of using mm -hmm. nicer blade steels. Yep. Um, which I'm probably partially, I, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm to blame because that toots my own horn too much, but like <laughs> I'm one of the people who's saying that steels should be expected to be a certain level at a certain price point. And I think more and more people are saying that and are not buying things based on what steel people are using. And I always mm -hmm. hear like the, there's a whole crowd who's like, well, it doesn't even matter what steel it is because none of these people are even using it anyways. Why do you care if it's S35 or 20 CV? Like, what's the difference for you really? And it's like, I get the argument because I do think a lot of people don't use their stuff enough to notice. Like if you, if they were mismatched, if you couldn't tell because they were marked incorrectly, mm -hmm. what steel something was a lot of people, myself included on many of my knives, it would take me way too long to even notice. But yeah. I do think there's something to be said for like, a value proposition of if oh, I'm yeah. giving this amount of money, I expect X amount in return. It's well, not always materials, but yeah. materials is the tangible one to hold on to. Exactly. You know? And there's so much competition in the field now that you can just, you know, drop $300 and get, you know, that 20, 20 CV or what, whatever other steel it is, you know, it's just like, come on, you guys need to bring up or like step up your great, your game in that sense. And yep. um, I'm with you on that one for sure. Killer man. So, Let's kind of give people a snapshot if they're not aware of who you are yet. How did you get into content creation and knives in general? Because sure. your content is very knives focused. Um, yeah. EDC stuff as well, not, mm -hmm. not just knives. But how did you kind of come into the realm of EDC? And then how did that turn into you being in the content creation end of it? So, you know, it was all based off of the pandemic. 
in terms of the EDC content creation, um, mm -hmm. before that, you know, I've done like car photography, I've done like landscapes, portraits, stuff like that ever since I was like a little kid. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started making like car videos and stuff like that. I, I'm huge into cars. I don't know if you knew that or I was I huge it. into cars. I'm glad but, to hear it. You're a good <laughs> company. Yeah. So um, basically I would take pictures of cars and stuff like that. It progressed, the pandemic hit, and then um, we were just trapped inside. So you couldn't really go anywhere. Um, at that point, I was just like, okay, well, um, what am I going to do with all this time? And I happened to go to my local shields and pick up a Benchmade Valet. That was my mm -hmm. first like higher end knife. Um, before then, I had a bunch of CRKT knives and, uh, you know, like the M16, the class yeah. or whatever. Is that, I still that's have one I, of those sitting yeah, in my like junk drawer. I've got it. Mine's M16. broken, but <laughs> mine doesn't have a clip on it anymore. Oh, yeah. Same here. I took mine off, but. Um, yeah, so basically, um, I got the valet and then just took a picture of it off of my phone. I was like, wait a minute, I can really dive into product photography. So it really did start off on Instagram. And, um, you know, I wasn't expecting too much out of it. I just wanted to share, you know, my skills in terms of learning product photography because sure. uh, I didn't really have any experience in product photography beforehand. Yeah. So after I picked that up, um, you know, I had my really crappy Nikon DSLR. Uh, that was, you know, seven years old and mm -hmm. um, ran the page for about three to four months. And then from there, it actually scaled forward because I picked up TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, the funny thing is on TikTok, I was just like, oh, what is this app? Um, you know, my girlfriend kept sharing videos on it. And I was like, you know what? It's a lot of like just people dancing and then that's it. So right. um, I had a Benchmade Infidel on loan from Blade Ops. And you met those guys. They're really yeah. sweet. Um but basically, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to post a quick video before I head out um, for a 4th of July barbecue at mm -hmm. my buddy's house. So I made the video and I just shut it off completely, completely forgot about it and um, came home around midnight. So within three hours, that video hit like 200,000 views. Jeez. And I was just like, holy cow, are you kidding me? And um, I tried to find some other content creators that were doing, you know, knife EDC content on TikTok and there was no one on there. Right. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to keep progressing. That night, I think I posted eight other videos <laughs> on like the, uh, a bunch of Benchmade knives and then a few Spyroco knives. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, from that point forward, um, it just started to catch a lot of traction. Um, then I started, you know, doing YouTube videos and stuff like that. And it's just kind of just a conglomerate now. But I love it. Yeah. I think the first thing. time we talked, was right before you started your YouTube channel, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, which it's been awesome to watch your growth because I was on Instagram f with a knife account, like just right. posting knives. At the time, mm -hmm. I guess when I started it, there were cars as well. It was knives, guns, cars was my handle. And I would post yeah. two columns of knives in a white background. <laughs> and then in the center, it was a car photo because I went to car meets like crazy yeah, and yeah. loved automotive photography. And sure. so I, I, was a slave to my feed. I had to have it perfect, but um, <laughs> sure. I'd been in like the Instagram end of the community for a while. So I had some mm -hmm. following. Um, so I've been in that world for quite a while now, a good few years, but yeah. I've only been on YouTube for a couple months more than you right. basically. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I remember when you reached out, you were also like, coming up on a thousand Instagram sub, uh, yep, followers. Yep. I was just like, oh like, man, I'm such a small, like little person here in this huge, you know, right. opportunity of, uh, but constant, I'd seen your, so. your pictures and, uh, you were already doing super well on the photography end of it. And like, you had a little bit of a unique approach. You weren't like one of the pirate accounts, but you were yeah, like, yeah similar ish without kind adding of, like, yeah, the pirate yeah. element to it i mean uh, kind of like that but <laughs> yeah. i appreciate it man mm -hmm. but yeah i vibed with it and so i yeah i was stoked when we started talking and it's been cool to see that your growth has been wild <laughs> compared to yeah. most like I, a lot of people compliment me on how quick my channel has grown which right. i always like thank you but i also kind of laugh because getting a few thousand subscribers in a year is nothing compared to many other realms right. of youtube for this niche it i think it's decent right but like oh yeah if, if you look at the fitness youtube world or whatever like it's a whole different ball game um right. but yeah you've been able to achieve a really rapid amount of growth would you say a lot of that has been 
because of TikTok, like because the the followers seem to come crazy quick for you over there, which is yeah. great. You're like monopolizing that space. Do you think oh, a lot of your YouTube and Instagram followers are from TikTok? Yeah. So, I mean, um, it's a way I, I see TikTok as a platform of not like reviewing, doing like stuff I do on YouTube and Instagram. For sure. Yeah, you can to get get my face out there. Right. Like I want to be that guy. I want to be the EDC knife guy on TikTok. And, um, you know, I, I always post on my TikTok videos like, hey, the link is in the bio. Like, just go to my bio and then you can see everything. And mm -hmm. um, it's definitely picked up a lot of traction from there. And on top of that, you know, I do spend a lot more time in making my YouTube videos. Um, mm -hmm. I So I'm kind of like the opposite of you. I focus on, um, you know, qu quality over quantity in that sense. And right. both have their their ways of going. Um, you know, my first days on YouTube, I was posting a video every single day and mm -hmm. trying to get all the B-roll and everything just done and good. But um, since then, I've kind of scaled back and wanted to focus on all three platforms. Mm. You know, that, that's that been my goal the entire time. I'm not really focusing on it too much on the numbers, but more so just like, hey, am I happy with this video that I just created? Yeah, and, and the numbers are coming on, from yeah. it. Yeah, that's yeah. a, a natural yeah, progression. And, and it's really fun to do. I mean, like, I love doing that stuff. And um, I've had, you know, followers ask me, like, hey, what's your dream job? And my dream job is to do content creation full time. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I really do want to strive for, um, just doing what I love. So, yeah, I dig it. And right now you still work full time, right? Yes. As a day mm -hmm. job, which yep. my hat's off to do to <laughs> like the fact that yeah. you can not only have a YouTube channel that you're posting to some level of regularity, but to also be active on Instagram and how you post to TikTok more than anything else. Yeah. And I hardly ever log on to TikTok, but yeah, when I yeah. do, there's always a ton of videos from you. <laughs> and the few times where like after we met up, I think you tagged me in something. And then yeah. like the one where I dropped the fake strider off the cliff, you yeah, shared that was crazy. Every time that you've shared something of mine, all of a sudden I get like a billion TikTok notifications. Oh, I, I had no idea. Of, <laughs> which is hilarious because like oh, I don't I don't post on there. I don't the right, few times right. I've tried putting anything knife related, it gets pulled down. Um oh, so I've yeah, just kind of that. abandoned ship, but Dude, yeah, the, the fact that you're able to do it consistently while working, like not just at any job, but from what I've gathered from talking to you, your day job is pretty demanding. Yeah, yep. that's, computers. yeah. Computers. Oh man, it, like when we talk about computer specs, it goes way deeper, <laughs> like RAM timing and all this other stuff. It gets crazy. So, I mean, like with knives and like knife steel and like chemistry, geometry, all that stuff, it really enticed me in terms mm. of that aspect. And I was already a really like huge tech nerd in the first place. You know, I used sure. to stream, live stream gaming and all that stuff. And then, you know, I completely dropped that though because I enjoy this so much more. Mm. So I dig yeah, it. That's been kind of wrapped together. That's funny. I had a, a buddy in high school who was pretty into like building computers and stuff. Sure. And uh, I've never... Uh, it's above my head, all that stuff. And so I would purposely oh, yeah. say things to make him mad. And I would always say how much ramming speed does it have? Cause I knew <laughs> it was how much Ram it looked, but I was oh, like, awesome. what's the ramming speed on that one, Scott? And he'd get oh, ticked man. every time. He's like, you that's can't hilarious. say ramming speed. And I was like, are we getting up to oh, ramming speed yet? Um, that just popped. Oh, that's, head. that's amazing. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's talk um, for you over time having the channel and the TikTok and the Instagram and focusing on content creation and getting to handle a ton of different knives. This is always an interesting thing for me when talking to reviewers is hearing about like, what's the progression been for your taste in knives? Cause oh, for me, yeah. it's changed a lot over time. Mm -hmm. And even before the channel, just being in the hobby, trying new things relatively regularly, my tastes were evolving over time, but the frequency or the the rate at which it changes, it's ramming speed really goes up <laughs> dramatically. I think yeah, when you're reviewing, yeah. how's that been for you? Dude, it's been absolutely ridiculous. Like, you know, when I first got into, I guess, EDC and knives um, back a year ago, I was just like, okay, well, um, how here's a $200 bailout. Like, holy cow, that's an expensive knife. And then it's just been progressing, you know, like yeah. tenfold. And um, now, you know, you've got like, my, my most expensive knife right now, I think, is the Inkosi. So mm. the large Inkosi. It's, but, not um, it's, not, it's not coming close to what you guys have yet. You know, the guys in the grog. But um, it's getting there. Oh. <laughs> Dude, is that the sigil? 
Oh, yeah, I just unboxed man, it today. That thing is so gorgeous. I can't even imagine how much that was. <laughs> It, it was not cheap. I'll yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, um, my tastes overall in terms of like design and everything, um, it's evolved quite a bit. Um, I'm finding attraction more towards like more minimalist style knives. Um, mm. Before it was just like, okay, I want to get, you know, as many knives in my hands as possible just to see what I like. But yeah, um, yeah it's evolved quite a bit. Um, you know, I've handled a lot of Marfion knives because Blade Ops, you know, they, they're a huge retailer for them. And you yeah, know, those are like two thousand three thousand dollar knives and it's just like holy cow they get crazy. really appreciate this but yeah it's uh that's kind of the boat right now and i'm trying to get into that next level in terms of like um looking at like shergorov and like you know that sigil is pretty sweet um the more expensive realm but i'm kind of scared because then uh, you know the bar has been set even higher like oh yeah a thousand dollar knife is just yeah, whatever. <laughs> but it's hard to go back. That's yeah. when it's going to get scary. Um, a lot of my following do request, you know, the budget knife reviews. I know that um, not a lot of people enjoy that when you're an enthusiast, but um, mm. for the bulk amount of people that are just looking to get into knives, that might be helpful for them. So eventually yeah. evolve into an enthusiast. And I think you have to start from ground zero and then kind of progress it from there. So I I'm going to mix and match. So, yeah. Yeah. So when you say you're into minimalist knives... I kind of want to dig into that a little bit. So sure. what do you mean, just mean like simple, like simple Simplistic, lines? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Simple like, materials, like simple color. Palette. Right, How right. would you define that? Simple genre? lines. Like um, if we were to look at it, um, the Benchmade Tengu. I know you weren't a huge fan of it, but for me personally, I really like the lines on that. I don't know if you've seen the intro to my videos. It's but so in minimalist the, that it doesn't the, have a pocket. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um, my EDM logo, my original one, that is actually a Tango opening, opening yeah. up. Yeah. So um, that's kind of why I'm trying to get at is just like the geometry in terms of like the overall design. I think that, you know, the more simplistic it is, I can appreciate that even more. Sure. So that's just how my taste is a little bit more. Um, getting into in that sense mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean uh so i could ask you the same question what, what's yours at the moment yeah i don't know first i'll say i think it's interesting like some people are able to kind of find a niche that works for them mm -hmm. and i think a lot of it with you like being into photography and putting together really cool flat lays and your style of content creation I totally get why for you, the minimalist knives speak to you, right? Like it, yeah. mm -hmm. it resonates with you because I think that fits your whole vibe. The, right. Right. What you've created for mm -hmm. me, it's been interesting because I, I don't know that I have like a genre. I definitely have preferences right. and I know what those are, mm -hmm. but I also find knives frequently that like kind of break some of my rules in ways that I like. And right. like, I mean, I have things like the Demco 8020, which is yeah. just a beast, right? <laughs> you got to hold this. Man. We were... <laughs> yeah, that thing was amazing. You're going to have to bring that back up here. <laughs> I'll loan it to you next. I'll be up there right. next month yeah, um, yeah. or this month now. This That's month crazy. now. Yeah. But yeah, so like I really like things like that. But then I just got like the sigil's not at all like that. Yeah. Right. And then, I mean, my Arius is like my favorite knife. That's not really like either of those. Right. And I just like things in a lot of different variety. Yeah. Variety yeah. Is huge, I'm guessing. But I have gotten really picky too, which is yeah. it kind of, to me just shows that like there are a lot of really good knives out there. Like right. I don't have to pick a type of knife to find a good knife in the market right. in 2021. So much of the stuff that's coming out is just really, really good. And yeah. there's a lot of variety, which is nice. Cause sometimes mm -hmm. I think knife designers and knife makers, uh, it might seem like there's a lot of repetition, like they have mm -hmm. to worry about, oh, am I copying so-and-so's design if right, I do this? Right. And there are certainly some iconic designs, but the amount of new knives that have been coming out seems to only just be increasing <laughs> as time yeah, goes okay. on. Absolutely. And there's not a ton of issues with like, oh, that looks too much like that. You know, there's there's still original stuff coming out. Yep. And it's not always just weird. Sometimes it's brilliant. Like, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Now I have to think about that more. I think. Like, <laughs> yeah. My, what's my genre? <laughs> I yeah. Don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd I would say um, more minimalist knives speak to me, like the Mula or the mm -hmm. F five point five. Um, just like really simplistic 
Does Great that make knives. sense? And in terms of like that thing isn't too busy. Um, like the the SoCom Elite, this guy right here, this is a little too busy for me, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, I can still adore the knife, but is it the like, chicken foot on the blade? Is that yeah, yeah, the, the chicken foot. <laughs> but yeah, so like I I like knives that um, their blades don't have any branding whatsoever. Um, the Malibu yeah. is a great example. You know, it's just very clean and sterile. Yeah. yeah, as sterile as possible in that sense. And um, I think those are the types of knives that really attract me the most, you know, that will make my, you know, top 10 lists yeah. of like 2021 or 2020. So I like that. So mm -hmm. you mentioned another thing a few minutes ago that I wanted to dig mm -hmm. into. We're going to talk about knives a whole lot more than this. Don't worry. But um, <laughs> yeah. you mentioned, so a determining factor on which knives you buy right now, you said, my followers want to see this or my subscribers want to see this. Right. So like you're getting a lot of budget knives because that's what your following wants to watch. Yeah. And I love that answer, even though I couldn't relate to it less because I, right, I should right. probably yeah. be more that way mm -hmm. if I was, I don't know. I, everyone has different yeah, yeah. goals and, <laughs> and no, visions. No, but always do that. I, I love it that there are channels like yours who are like, I am going to make the content for the knives people want to buy. Because on the receiving end of content, maybe I'm just super selfish, but <laughs> before I had a channel, when I was just watching mm -hmm. knife content, right. of course, the videos I wanted to watch were the knives that A, I wanted, and B, were in my price range. If things were way above my price range, a lot of the time mm -hmm. I wouldn't even let myself watch the video because it's like, then I'm just going to want it and I know I can't have it. Yeah, yeah. But like... Yeah, I'm so selfish with the videos that I make where I only bring in knives that I personally really want. Otherwise, oh, I'm just like, no interest. But yeah, how how has that worked for you? And how do you find out what things people want to watch the most for your channel? Like, how do you get that info and then run with it? Sure. Yeah. So um, first off, you know, I'll get a lot of suggestions on TikTok. Like people will be commenting like, hey, um, is the like the most recent video, the CRKT stylus? That I posted. Um, someone recommended that they're like, "Hey, there are no videos on YouTube with this specific knife. Like, you should totally take it and then see what you know how it performs and everything. What your thoughts are." And they wanted mm -hmm. to hear that. So um, basically, I just did a quick YouTube search, like Sarah KT Stylus, and there's Blade Ops. You know, they did a quick one minute review over it, and mm -hmm. then I think um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They did like you know. A bunch of different models and then included that in one of the features gotcha. so um you know i'll look and see if anyone's ha has produced that content and then i will give them my honest opinion no matter what um it's been really hard you know i've got a lot of um you know higher end knives and when i swap back over to something that's going to be more budget efficient it's like okay i'm doing this for my following i need to yeah. give them my honest opinion i already know what it's like because my first i think like knife knife i got um before the bench made was um the uh, Savivi shredder. So mm. I, I was like, okay, this is this is just going to be like a dip, dip my toes in the water and then see what's up. And that, that knife impressed me. I was like, holy cow. Okay, well, what does that Benchmade um, do different than this Savivi? So, right. um, you know, Bob, Bob and I uh, were chatting. Old man Bob on Instagram. Uh, yeah. We were chatting about this, and um, basically, you know, there are going to be those beginner. Um, knife users or they just want to kind of dabble their feet into it and i want to be that guy that's like okay you know we've got this budget range we've got the mid range we've got high high end range for example and they can find all that on this one channel um mm -hmm. slicey dicey does that really well on his channel so i was like okay yeah i used to watch a lot of his content when i first started into this and um i wanted to reflect that as well and try to produce yeah. even better content in that sense so yeah, I love it. I and someone, it. yeah, someone has to be making the videos for those people who are coming in. And I think yeah. that's part of why I'm so glad that channels like you are handling it. Yeah. yeah. Cause I just don't, I, I don't, it, it may change over time. I may right. find like that I'll get interested in right. seeing like, maybe I'll just get an itch to find out right. what's the best budget knife right now. And I'll mm -hmm. try a bunch to get there and I'll review them all. Yeah. And like that could happen. Um, but Absolutely. I don't know. I'm just so resistant to doing things that it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what so, I should be doing. Yeah. Like a why. funny, funny thing is um, I've got my, all of my IRL or in real life friends. Um, they were oblivious with knives and mm. um, you know, I got deep into it. So I was just like, okay, what are some cheap knives I can just gift them 
to like dabble in, put their toes in the water. So um, I bought a bunch of Civivi Elementums and just handed it out um, to mm -hmm. my buddies, you know, like eight, eight friends. And um, now they're all on the, you know, bench made level. So it's like, okay, I can do this with my following too. You know, they, we want, I want to get more people into uh, the EDC community. So that way, you know, the more people there are, the more designers that are going to pop up and, you know, it's better just for the ecosystem in that sense. Yeah. So that's been I, the I do goal. Think, mm -hmm. I think it's growing too. Like the, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, I don't know. It's interesting because like seeing my subscriber count grow is not a mm -hmm. reflection that the knife community is growing. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. I still haven't reached everybody that's in the community to start sure. trying to need to find more. Um, but I do see like being in Facebook groups and being on Instagram and stuff. I do see newer accounts popping up and people like at entry points a lot right. lately where it's like they've got one or two maybe three knives that are sure. like not just gerbers that they've had forever but like they're right, starting right. to to choose yep. things and to yep. post about them and i love seeing that i uh yeah, as much as I don't yeah, want to no, make budget I, knife videos, I want to encourage that. As I was much one as I of them, man. Uh, yeah, I was definitely one of them, and um, that's just the way. Um, I, I just want to bring more people in. You know, a lot more. My target audience is probably going to be more so the newcomers than the people that are already in the EDC community. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, that's the whole point of TikTok. Is you know, there's it's going to reach a huge demographic of all these people that don't know about knives. And really? some of my most viewed videos are like, hey, here's a thousand dollar knife versus a thirty dollar knife. Mm -hmm. Here are the differences. You guys should definitely check this out. Even if it's a fifty dollar knife, there's a big difference between the two. Type of deal. Right. You know, those those get a lot of views and it kind of just makes it so people understand, like, hey, there are like really fine niches in that sense. Yeah. And, and it's an eye opening knives. concept yeah. if you're mm -hmm. not in the hobby already. Exactly. Like, I mean, we we all had to start at some point. I think right. very, very few people start with knives that cost hundreds of dollars. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, even if you're loaded, you have to see mm -hmm. the value usually. Right. And that's one of those things that from the outside looking in, it's really hard to see the value of what can make a knife cost so much. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's an interesting one. So for you, it, maybe we can go down that rabbit hole a little bit. Sure. As you perceive value... Do you think there's like a range where you get the most knife for your money or like, how do you, how do you weigh that for yourself as you're yeah. shopping for a knife you want, or is there a grail that's super expensive? Like sure. What makes a knife worth it at a certain price point for you? So I, I would have to say the blade steel. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. That's for sure. Like um, S35 VN, um, like in a Chris Reeve knife, I when I originally reviewed like the Sabenza 21, I was oblivious and didn't really understand steel. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's like, okay, I've handled so many knives that like, hey, uh, you know, you can get a $200 um, F5.5 with M390 yep. all day long. And um, I think as newer steels come out, um, you know, like, for example, what was that new one that was coming out? That, Magna uh, Cut? Yeah, Magna Cut. Yeah, I was like, hey, Jake, what is that? <laughs> um, and I have to have, like, I, I get all of my information from buddies, you know, um, whatever you guys yeah. recommend. And, um, you know, if it looks interesting to me, I'll try to hunt it down. I've been trying to find an 80-20 for the longest time now, just FYI, just because everyone's been raving about it. It's not really my style. But um, I want to get one in my hands. That's one of those like grail knives I'm trying to seek out right now. Um, yeah, you're going to borrow mine. Don't worry. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, uh, it just depends. Like um, right now, my price point for a grail knife would probably be in the like the seven to $800 range. I just haven't really honed in on that mm -hmm. because I've been so much more focused on like the two to 300, maybe $400 range. So, which is still attainable for me right now. Totally fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think the range where I've been like happiest, I don't know. That's interesting to say because I think I'm happier right now with some of the crazy things I've been getting. <laughs> right. One of the ranges that I thought was like most exciting where there's a, a variety and a ton of quality um, and where I could like have some buying power was mm -hmm. that like two to 400 bucks somewhere yeah. in there mm -hmm. because at that point you can get really good materials. You can get great fit and finish. You can get designs by cool makers that are right. actually treated well. Like mm -hmm. if you're getting a Voxnay's design at 
40 bucks, then the fit and finish and the materials aren't, aren't really there enough to like show you what his designs really are. In my yeah, opinion, exactly. You're going to hit that. Like, super yeah. Easy. But if you're getting, yeah. if you're getting a Vox Naze design at 250 bucks, then the fit and finish and the materials should all be there to like, let the design really shine through for what yeah. it can be. Yeah, um, sure. And I think at that range, you see a lot of that where knives are, mm. are really good. Like, as good in terms of materials and fit and finish right. as most customs. <laughs> oh yeah. They're, absolutely. they're just not custom. So they don't, yeah. customs are their, their own kind of value, you know, but exactly. yeah, I don't know. It's knife price ranges are such a funny thing because mm -hmm. I've known some people who get like really quick, they go super deep and they'll go from yeah. a budget stuff, and then six months later, they're buying multi thousand dollar customs. <laughs> yeah, and right. there's other people where it's like a slope that they're sliding down mm -hmm. and they're going from $50 civivis to 150 to $200, like Benchmade Spider Co., some Wii's, yep. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then they go from there to like nice Reats and, mm -hmm. you know, like TRMs and Protex and things that are right. kind of Start a notch. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. That's the route I took. You know, I started um, pretty low and then it scaled up into the bench made spider coats. And then that was there for like, you know, months. And then um, I, I think I had the 31, the 31 was a grail at the time when I had like mm. my bailout and other bench made knives. And um, once I got that knife, I was just like, okay, you know, anything below that just feels cheap now. And it, it's yeah. just weird how that works. But yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people get into it. I can still appreciate a budget knife, like the Wee Banter. Um, ben made that, and that thing is awesome. I still have mine. I still love it. You know, it's a $100 knife, and I recommend that to everyone. You know, if they're like, hey, yeah. what's the best $100 knife? The Banter is what I usually recommend. So yeah, it's a very good one. Um, so when you're recommending a knife, I guess do you like dig into the person or do you have like certain yeah. bag dancers for like at sure. a price point? This is what I recommend. Cause that's always an interesting one for me. It's very mm -hmm. enticing <laughs> to just yeah. like, it, you get so many people at a certain point who ask you what knife oh, to get. Absolutely. It's very enticing to just like get a Malibu, you know, like good luck. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, um, but this is a super funny question because um, I have my, the president of our company, he beats the crap out of his knives. Like you should see his infidel. It doesn't even fire open all the way anymore or yeah. deploy. Um, but he was like, Hey man, um, I'm trying to get a new knife. I see you that you have like five knives on the table at your desk all the time. What do you recommend? Mm -hmm. And um, I was just like, okay, what does he do? He mentioned that he does a lot of like gardening work and like, you know, stuff like what Chris does, for example. And yeah. I was just like, okay, does size matter? And then he's just like, no. And I was like, boom, 308. And I, you know, got a loaner from Blade Ops, brought it to him. And he was just like, this is an amazing knife. Like, I want it. How much is it? And I was just like, 300 bucks. And then he just bought it. You know, you get those people that like don't really care about the money. And then um, right. I got buddies that ask you like, hey, uh, I just want to get into this. Uh, I've got 50 to $60. What do you recommend? And um, I always recommend the Civivi Elementum. I never got your thoughts on that. But um, I think that's a pretty good knife for the price that it's at especially for yeah. you know, how it feels, the materials used and all that good stuff. But Yeah, I reviewed yeah. one and I thought it was awesome. Honestly, my take on the Elementum was it's just as recommendable as pretty much any Civivi. Like yeah. The, yeah. the easiest mm -hmm. response I have for somebody who's looking to be under 75 bucks is go on any major retailer or mm -hmm. Civivi site themselves or whatever and pick one <laughs> decide which design you like yep. and it's going to have nice action it's going to be centered yeah. it's going to be like a decent enough materials list like pick right. one that speaks to you and go for mm -hmm. it the elementum is good i liked the bash backlash when i checked that out a while ago mm -hmm. they're coming out with so many new models that i strategically try to like avoid checking them out all the time <laughs> sure, because it's yeah. just a rabbit hole i don't want to go down but it's yeah, like so everyone good. i've handled mm -hmm. has been well built it's got a fun action and they do well and like yeah just a few months ago my brother-in-law was like I, I need to get a knife and i was like sure. sweet what do you what do you want to spend he's like definitely under 100 bucks i was like sure. This was like right before Christmas. There were sales going mm -hmm. on. I was like, 
yeah. pick a Civivi that speaks to you. And he got like two on a deal, ordered them, loved them. Right. And now he's ordered other knives since that are yeah. even nicer. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they're a great gateway. It's definitely. Offering. A gateway. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. And the and Elementum I, is a great one. I, right. I like right. It. Yeah. And I trust it. So, I mean, I use mine all the time. I have two Elementums and um, they're great knives especially if you want yeah. a beater knife um, when you eventually upgrade. So right. Just miss me with that button lock elementum. I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but I haven't, I haven't handled it or seen it or anything like that. It's not going to match up to a Malibu. I can almost guarantee that. But, um, yeah, well, it, it isn't even designed to because the button oh, has to no be depressed. Time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. And if there was, it's locked unless you press the button. Oh, it's man. not like there's a detent on the button it's like the button locks it closed oh, and locks it okay. open yeah and I, i'm oblivious that's... to that knife so i have no idea what's yeah. going on with it although now in their new i've seen civivi posting lately that in their like new upcoming offerings yeah. there are a few button locks that have flippers or studs yeah, and it's like that. mm-hmm. see that's more compelling but i just yeah i think the elementum has been so successful for them that they're right. just like we're gonna However, we can like the out. <laughs> change this slightly to sell more yeah, of them yep. to people who already like the first one. That's oh, what we're going to do. Yep, yep. More power to them, I guess, but for sure. not for me. Um, all right. So there's another thing I wanted to ask you. Um, in the grog, which obviously we're both in mm-hmm. the grog. Yes. I just had Chris on the last episode, Renegade EDC. Um, mm-hmm. There you go. And I've had MB on. We've done an episode. We're going to be doing another I'm sure other groggers will be on here very soon, but oh, for sure. in there a couple weeks ago now, the idea of a grail got brought up. Somebody shared a post um, in the group of, I think it was Jim Skelton. I talked about this on my solo podcast, but he was talking about what a grail actually is. And okay. he showed some crazy custom that it was like, he's building mm-hmm. one of these that makes it a grail. Cause only one person can have one and everyone else wishes basically. Right. Right. Uh, but for you, you mentioned already like one of your first grails was the CRK 31, right? Um, and you have other grails now. And I think that's kind of the point of grails. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, how, <laughs> yeah. So how would you define that word? Like what does grail mean to you? Because I'm curious what other sure. people think of it yeah. now that I've been pondering on it. And I definitely was watching that solo podcast you did, and you were mentioning that as mm. well. And I was like, oh, man, I want to talk to Jake about this in his podcast. So <laughs> um, well, we're here. anyways, yeah, so I think a grail is something that is going to be a little bit harder to attain and um, something that's within reach in a sense. I know a lot of people are saying like, okay, this is my grail. Um, you know, I can drop $5,000 on this and I'm going to be chasing that forever. Um, like the GMP5, I think, is a, a grail for a lot of people. Um, mm. because it's no longer produced, I don't think, but, um, yeah, no, for all of the GM yeah. series knives, they make, I think it's 400 of the regular ones and then 100 of the P ones. So yeah, for yeah. each so GM, P1, P2, P3, they're all just a hundred mm-hmm. each. And some of right. them were way more sought after than others, but exactly. So, I mean, um, I can, I can kind of see that it's a little less attainable in that sense. Like for the 80, 20, I think I can get my hands on one, um, mm-hmm. you know, at, in the future, uh, whenever that may be. But um, that's kind of how I view the grails. Because before I got into that, you know, like I was in the um, 31 was um, one of the grails and I was able to actually get it. I attained that grail, but then it, another grail pops up, for example. Like after I got right. that, I was like, okay, I want an Nikosi with micarta inlays and in a Tanto blade shape. That's, that's what I want. And that was a grail for probably six months um, at the time. So... Mm-hmm. That's how I view it in in that term. I don't know. Um, I think you have a very similar type of definition of it, but yeah. Yeah. I think honestly, the best way I can encapsulate the way I look at it is there has to be some hurdle between having it right now. Right. And like, exactly. you, you can't, it can't be, I could just get it right now. And whether that's my own budget or whether right. that's availability or like mm-hmm. whatever it is, <laughs> It, it needs to be just out of reach, but yeah. you, it has to be something that you're willing also to kind of like sacrifice for. So um, knives, right. And yeah. So a couple knives, get. save up whatever it is. And yeah, I think it should take some hunting, you know, like the, the quest Definitely. for the grail yeah. is a thing, mm-hmm. but I do think it's also, it's very individual what a person's grail is. And it depends on the time. Like my grails from 
when I started the hobby, I've gotten way past. And right. now it's like some of the knives I've gotten just recently have been grail pieces. Yes. And now I have them. And so it's like, now I have to define what the next ones are. And it right. doesn't like, have to mean that they're grail. more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It just has to mean that like, there's something in the way of me getting it right now. Right, right. But I want it bad enough to work for right. it. I don't, that's kind of the way I look at it. But Yeah, and it's super individualized. I mean, um, you could be talking to a 13-year-old that's really interested in knives, and he might see that Benchmade, you know, bailout or bug out as the grail knife. And yep. I can still appreciate that, that kid because he's still looking up to that. That's not as attainable to him at the moment, but he will eventually get right. there and then progress from that point forward. So I don't look yeah. at, down at people where they're like, okay, yeah, um, my uh, my grail is a um, you know a bailout. I just be like, you know, I've handled that knife. It's a great knife. Save up for it, and then you could eventually get that, and then scale forward from there if you really do enjoy this hobby. Yeah. So that's how I view it. But yeah, no, I dig that. And I was that thirteen year old kid who <laughs> wanted <laughs> knives he couldn't have. Yeah. So I relate to it. Like I remember probably about that age the knife that I wanted so badly, but was mm. totally out of reach was the cold steel outdoorsman. It's just a really nice fixed mm -hmm. blade. Right. They might even still make it. I don't know. I think but, they still have that, but yeah. Yeah. It would just, I don't know that it would be what I'd pick now with my taste. If I did, it would be mm -hmm. purely like a nostalgia buy that I wanted it right, as a right. kid. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I remember so badly wanting that knife and yeah. I had a couple of cold steel fixed blades, but not on that level. And it was like, I'd watch the, mm -hmm. that part of the cold steel proof DVD where Lynn Thompson right. would be testing it on animals, mm -hmm. uh, the crazy stuff. Yeah. And I would just watch it over and over and like, Oh, I wanted that so bad, but I couldn't have it. Oh, sure. And, For sure. Yeah. And I think, that's how I started too. You know, um, when I was 13, I'd got my CRKT snap lock and M16. And then um, my uncle had taken me to one of the gun shows here in Utah. And mm -hmm. there was a bench made booth. And I was just like, ooh, those look interesting. Walk up to it. And I'm just like, I don't have $300, $400 to spend on these. What, what, what is this? And um, at that point forward, um, that's why Benchmade is one of my favorite companies is because, um, you know, just that childhood nostalgia factor yeah. in that sense my dad had bench maids in his pocket and it always made me want them mm -hmm. yeah yep so that's kind of how it went gotcha so you're in salt lake city area in utah yeah. in utah we met up the last time i was there which was awesome i got to meet mm -hmm. you in person so i knew you weren't a catfish anymore <laughs> yeah, uh, <right. laughs> and uh we met up at blade ops which was super fun you've got a good relationship with those guys tyler met us there as well yep. edc gear reviews um so I feel like from the outside looking in, there's kind of a perception that there is like kind of a hotbed of knife culture in Utah. Maybe that's because Blade HQ has had such a commanding YouTube yeah, presence for a long time. But obviously I'm not from there. I don't know. Sure. I was there yeah. for a few days in the last mm -hmm. 10 years. I've spent a week in Utah. Right. Um, is that true? Is there like... I know that Blade Ops is there. I met you there. I know yep. a couple of reviewers who live there. Ben Peterson mm -hmm. lives there. So like, yep. I know some guys there, but is it, is there a lot of people into knives in Utah or is it just that there's some kind of loud social media voices? from? Utah? Um, I, I think it's more so there's a lot of loud social media voices here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been spotted like twice at the mall from That's viewers. Like, oh, Hey, I saw you on TikTok, And I was just like, Oh, what's up, man. Um, and it, you know, it, it, it's not been to the point where it's like, okay, um, everyone's coming up to me asking me about knives, if that makes sense. Um, mm. You know, they don't have any restrictions on knives whatsoever. I mean, you could literally carry a Microtech Halo around, and that's, like, yeah. no problem. And, um, yeah, it's kind Where? of weird. I mean, it's the right? And um, the bulk amount of the duration I've been doing this content creation, um, it's been in the pandemic. So a lot of stuff was closed down um, when it first started up. Um, I haven't been out a ton. Like I have been going to some malls and some other places like Shields, but nothing too crazy. So once things are 100% open up again, that's when I can really feel that. Um, I've actually caught myself looking at people's pockets, trying to spot and see if people have knives in their pockets. And yeah. Um, I haven't really been able to like spot him aside from like go the guy at discount tire. <laughs> like, uh, gotcha. Yeah. But, I, sp I mean, yeah. I spot pocket clips fairly often down here. So yeah. Yeah. I just wondered, man. Yeah. I don't know. It, isn't blade HQ also moving out of Utah. 
I feel like I, t- I have no idea. I I've tried to get in contact with Blade HQ before, and uh, they're just like no. And I'm just like that. That was gotcha. when I was very small and barely starting. Yeah. And that's why I have such a close relationship with Blade Ops. It's like okay, well these guys were offering to help because I only had you know like ten posts on Instagram and showed them my work, and they were really impressed, and they uh, brought me on board, and I was like. This is this is great. I'm not going to leave you guys. If they try to offer me something else through that, you know, I'm I'm right. going to be loyal to you guys. And they're really nice dudes. And that yeah. shop is pretty cool. It's not a gigantic shop, but they have right. cool stuff in the cases. They have interesting yeah. inventory that's actually like I don't know. I walked into their warehouse. Not out of uh, touch, <laughs> right? And their warehouse is really impressive. Actually, it's probably mm-hmm. you know like five to six times the size of their front showroom gotcha. and um it was a lot more impressive um you know i did that maybe two weeks ago and i was just in like awe and that that was a pretty awesome experience but yeah i dig it yeah it's interesting because like i oftentimes catch myself thinking like oh we don't have any knife stores down here but then sure i think about it and we actually kind of do like so you i used to manufacturers down there right <laughs> well there's also there's some retailers like I used to right up the street from my house, there was at the mall right here, there was a knife shop in the mall. And that's actually right. where I became friends with my buddy who now works at ProTech. Um, and a couple of dudes who worked in there were really cool. And yeah. that was literally, I could walk there in under 10 minutes, but oh, that's, awesome. that's closed. It closed during COVID and like closed, closed. Mm, it's not coming back. Not. But we also have like, there's recon one, not far from me at all. And they're kind of big. They're like mm-hmm. the U S Shirogorov dealer. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's, there's gotta be more too, but there's also, yeah. Protech is down here. Mm-hmm. Strider is down here. Um, Olamic isn't far tour knives. I just went to their showroom. And oh, that's sweet. Okay. Yeah. They're really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a bunch of makers in Southern California. And there's a few retailers, but I feel like also Southern California is just such an interesting like demographic region because there's so many people. So like (laughs) if you've got two knife shops in the Salt Lake City area, that's actually like more per person than there are here because we have such a massive population. But absolutely. And I think they're doing Blade Show um, West in October. Long Beach. Yeah, I want. I'm definitely gonna go to that. Like, I don't care if I have to drive. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna yes. go. And if you're going, we gotta meet up. But of course, for yeah. Sure. I mean, we're yeah. We've already met up outside of a blade show. Of course, we're gonna meet up at Yo, a night yeah, show. Of course, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's gonna be wild. So as of when we're filming this, this Wednesday, it's in two days that blade show starts. So this will go up yes. after it's happening. But you mm-hmm. were originally thinking about going, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. I was. And then some financial things hit and I had to like blow my entire savings. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to be stuck at home. <laughs> yeah. And there's been some really cool stuff getting posted there. Um, like, Hey, this is a blade show exclusive. And I'm just like, man, I wish I could go, but I'll have the opportunity to go to the West because that's going to be a lot more inexpensive for me personally to get down there versus yeah. flying all the way out. So, I'm hoping to, I feel like, so I haven't been to blade show East or West ever. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And West is, it's traditionally been held in Portland, right. um, which even if it was in Portland, I was going to go this year. Cause I've got a buddy who mm-hmm. lives there, but now that it's in long beach, it's perfect. Cause I don't have to pay to stay anywhere. I live close <laughs> yeah. enough to just, just That's drive awesome. there. Um, but yet I don't know. I, what was I going to say? Having never been, I've heard that West is typically much smaller than Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that this year with it being like a different circumstance and in a new city that it's actually going to bring, I I don't imagine it'll be the same size, but I'm hoping it'll be bigger than West typically has been. Because I think a lot of makers are kind of wanting to play catch up on some shows and get out there and Mm -hmm. have a table. And I think down here, there's actually a pretty decent, like I meet a lot of guys online who are in sure. Southern California who yeah. are super into knives and there's big collectors down here. There's a number of retailers. Like I think it could shape up to be it an shows actual in my really TikTok good show. Videos, man. Yeah. A lot of people are, are in California. Another one of my more popular videos is like, Hey, here's the, um, the Cali legal, uh, microtech UTX 70. And that thing it blew up at like one and a half mil. That that thing is super sexy, by the way. 
I want to get yeah. my hands on one. <laughs> but, um, so I, yeah, I so, reviewed, I shot my review of this today and I talked about how I typically am not into Cali legal knives at all because I'm right, just like, right, why yeah. I bother? Like, um, but the Runt 5 is freaking dope. I love this thing. It's yeah. a really, really cool little knife. Absolutely. And um, I think that's just talking to people in Cali. Um, just more so like, oh, I didn't know that was illegal or this was legal or whatever it is. But it just goes to show the population of my um, followers. There's a bunch of them mm -hmm. in California. So I think, I hope Blade Show West, you know, is really successful. And then they just keep doing it there just because I don't really know anyone in Portland. Um, I feel like if you walk out of there with an OTF, you're just going to get arrested or whatever it may be. Um, See, but yeah. at California Custom Knife Show, I bought a Microtech Stitch at the Microtech table. And yeah. mm -hmm. You can own OTFs here and audio autos. You're just not supposed to carry them. Like, right. I don't know. It's a, the yes. whole thing is dumb. I, every I time I get a comment <laughs> on one of my, I'll get a comment on any automatic knife video inherently yep. where someone will be like aren't you not allowed to carry that and i'm like good try officer yeah. um <laughs> I, I, like your guys' laws I are think, so weird man that, like i, I don't even know dumb. like with cars as well like <laughs> they don't even get All me started it. on that but um yeah like they just passed a, a law here um i think back in may where you can just conceal carry constitutional like, carry yeah. yeah a lot of states yeah. doing that so an actual not like mine, a but... permit yep and it's just like Okay, well, um, I guess I can carry my clock, whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was talking to, uh, or maybe I was just watching this video, but Tyler, who you met, uh, yeah. he mm -hmm. met us at Blade Ops. Sure. Um, he concealed carries and has had a concealed carry permit for a long time. And I think he plans on keeping his just because with Utah, there's having that concealed carry permit, there's reciprocity. If you go out of state for a whole group of other states, not all of them, mm, California, okay. technically right, it doesn't right. cross over, but if he goes to Arizona or Idaho or whatever, like then he can still concealed carry. Right. Whereas if you're just carrying under the constitutional guys, then you can't go out of state and then carry. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I think, yeah, I, not to be political. I don't think this even is a political statement. No, I don't think the, so. <laughs> yeah. The Second Amendment is a, a federal document. So anything right. that supposedly overrules that and makes it illegal for me to carry a firearm, I think is massively unfair and unconstitutional and, oh, and wrong. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's just the nature of it. I'm working on getting my CCW here in California right now, which is going to take a while and we'll see if it yeah. actually happens. But supposedly there's a shot right now. So yeah. Well, Time give it a shot, man. Hopefully you get it. <laughs> I can't not. I, I have yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So let's talk. Uh, I guess since you've been playing more in the budget range than I have lately. Sure. Is there anyone other than we've talked about Civivi a decent bit, but are there any other companies that you feel are like crushing it right now or who's like dropping the ball what's the what's your take on what's happening in so, budget yeah um kershaw is actually stepping up their game uh they moved mm -hmm. to d2 as well and i think that was a really good move for them because um d2 was like it's a vv own that you know they they're like okay we'll get you a 50 dollar knife with d2 and it's just no problem like for example um i have this guy here i can't remember what it's called the end game. Um, let me pop this guy open real quick. But that's um, the Avengers one. Yeah, I, I don't know. It looks really weird, and um, I don't know what. I think it's supposed to be kind of Avengers themed. So this guy right here, yeah, it kind of is. But um, this guy right here has been pretty pr um, impressive. I think it's fifty bucks. It's got D two, and uh, the action isn't too bad for a fifty dollar knife. So. I think Kershaw is really stepping up their game. They've also got, uh, you know, that milled pocket clip in yes. terms of, or sorry, a uh, recessed pocket clip with deep carry. deep carry. Yeah. So um, that's another I big like deal. Uh, Civivi doesn't do that. So I think they're going to be taking it a little bit more seriously in that realm. Um, CRKT is kind of doing decent. Uh, they just came out with the bona fide. Do you know what that guy is? That's so the, the one with the field strip technology, the, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, that's the first time I've ever handled anything like that, and I was just really surprised with how drop shutty that thing is. Um, that's probably mm. going to be my next budget knife review. Um, the only mm. thing is, I think it has a blade that's similar to like 420, 
um hc and i'm just like oh, that's kind of gross for a hundred dollar knife like you could do better than that <laughs> and that same with yeah. um the stylus that was like something that i wanted to bring up as well as that you know the sandvik still i don't even know what that is but um yeah i'm not sure i think it's the vv still dominating is probably the yeah best especially now that they're rolling out a lot of nitro v uh oh yeah i think that's gonna help crazy because mm -hmm. yeah if, if kershaw is just starting to play d2 and savivi's yeah, already exactly. beyond it then it's like i don't know that's been kind of my gripe with a lot of those like, u.s budget companies even though they're making those budget knives in china right. as well kershaw's budget crkt's sure. but those are all chinese made mm -hmm. knives but yep. um they just seem to not really have like a finger on the pulse of what the enthusiast at least wants right and maybe they just haven't had to because they sell in dick sporting so goods maybe. and big yeah, five exactly. and you know like mm -hmm. they're out of big box stores more than they are online but these companies right. like civivi and cjrb and qsp that i hear a lot of people raving about i think mm -hmm. part of that is because they're so focused at selling on the internet to people who are researching right, right. and um, i have a qsp penguin i've i don't think i've ever shared any content on it but it's a decent knife for 30 bucks, the CJRB Feldspar. Um, that was also a really fantastic $30 knife budget like option. So yeah. um even rake. Yeah. I've tried a couple of rake knives and they're rake, super but... nice for how cheap they are. Like Gosh. yeah, there's yeah. there are good cheap knives out there, and I haven't had one that came from Kershaw or CRKT in a long time. Yeah, yeah. But it's I nice mean, to um, hear that knives like that end game sure. and the bona fide are are making advancements for them at least because yeah. i like seeing that they're listening and uh, hopefully they they actually like get a grip and start like making knives with like s30v at least or like s45 vn or whatever it may be like they just need to step it up a little bit and then uh, their designs can just take off you know yeah yeah it's like all those materials are are trickling down over time, right? Mm -hmm. Because right. a few years ago when I got into the game, S35 VN was still like, yes, we got S35 yeah. VN on that titanium right. frame lock. Right. And now it's like at that same range, S35 VN is not really cutting it. Exactly. <laughs> you got to yeah. really like the design to mm -hmm. be excited about it. If you're mm -hmm. over 200 bucks, mm -hmm. but there's, I don't know. I've seen some budget knives that like, Here's a good example. This I'd consider a budget knife because on right. Kickstarter it cost me $134. This is sure. the what, what is that? Kun, yeah. The Kunwu Tao. Um hmm. Kunwu knives. It's this guy Sergio, uh -huh. I guess, is the dude behind it. Yeah. It's a regular flipper and a front flipper, titanium frame lock with a Timascus pivot collar. And wow. it's got a deep carry loop over style titanium clip, orange peeled Whoa. scales with cool machining. And the action is really, really oh, good. What is that, man? <laughs> Front flipper, okay, yeah, back flipper. Yeah. It's awesome. And it's ergonomic. Sure. It carries super well. It's got some internal milling. This was sub $150 if you got yeah. it on Kickstarter. Oh, oh, I God. think the few that are left that are going to be selling soon um, yeah. before he does another run, like the extras, I think yeah. those are going to be maybe like 175 or something if you weren't a Kickstarter person, right. but that's still, still not bad. Yeah. And it's M390 and yeah, he Rockwell's it and that it Rockwell's crazy. just fine. It's treated correct. Like that clip I, is pretty impressive. I'm, I'm looking at that right now and it looks like it's like an the, ultra deep carry pocket clip. <laughs> it's, that's everything crazy, about man. this knife yeah. is astoundingly good for how much it costs. And the way that he describes it is basically like, he has a lot of experience in the industry. So he was able to like make the right moves to get this knife cheap rather than cheaping out on components of the knife. And that's awesome to see. And it's like, Crazy. this makes me mad at knives that are $300 and have S35 VN. <laughs> well, that's the thing I is don't. like, you need guys like that or companies like that, that will produce such a good quality knife at that price point to push other people or other companies um, in a competitive feature, you know, like it, that, that's just the way that they should do it. You know, it's like that sub $200 yeah. knife with M390. Like, come on, man. Uh, you're, you're throwing S35 VN in there. There's just like no comparison whatsoever. And with titanium, yeah. with Timascus or whatever that pivot collar was. But yeah, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, it's interesting. 
I, I also, I find myself like, I don't know, it's an, a debate I'm willing to have with people a lot, but I also okay. don't want to be a total a-hole about it, like talking about steals. Cause I'm also, I'm not yeah. Laren Thomas. I'm not the authority right, on the right. subject, but the other day, maybe it was a week or two ago in, I'm in the Demco Facebook group, oh, great yeah. Facebook group. And I love these knives. I can't speak highly enough of the right. 8020 and I'm loving the 8020.5s and mm -hmm. like, I, I speak very highly of them all the time, but in there, uh, one of the admins put up a post saying, Hey, we're thinking about doing a knife for the group. I don't know how this will work. Um, uh, sorry if I'm letting the cat out of the bag, Demco group in some way, but <laughs> <laughs> the conversation is pertinent because they were like, it'll have this specific new like blade shape, blade profile. And we do it in a steel. That's one of Andrew's favorites and it's CPM 154. 154. And, everybody everybody in the comment section like 100 plus people were like i'm so in yes let's do it oh yeah mm -hmm. i yeah. love cpm 154 <laughs> yeah. and, and i'm the like lone person in the comments who's like hold on like love you guys love the group love everything about this yeah. except why like why would you pick cpm 150 maybe i get that you might like working with it like mm -hmm. in terms of like for grinding it you like that but no like and yeah. you're going to charge the same amount as all oh, the other ones, okay. then I'm definitely out. Like if right. I have one in three V or I could have gotten it in 20 CV and it costs the same yeah. amount as one, whether it's a group special or not, like that's not an excuse mm -hmm. to put an inferior steel on it. And CPM 154 is inferior in 2021 to many options. Like, oh, yeah. absolutely. Even if you're looking for a well-balanced one, because that's always the argument It's like, well, I really like how balanced it is between toughness yeah. and ease of sharpening and edge retention. Yeah. And it's like by being mediocre at all of them, like you can get something that's good at all of those. I don't, yeah. I don't it's know. It's like it you're forking out the same amount of cash. And, uh, you know, if you're going to drop that amount of cash on something, you would expect it to be um, manufactured with a really good blade material yeah. or whatever it may be. It's like, okay, now I feel like, you know, it's worth this $500 or whatever right. it may be. My know? comment was like, how about we do something really, really interesting with a group knife? Like, Magna Cut, which they've already started trying there, or 10V, which hardly 10V, anybody okay. ever uses and is remarkable. Is. 10V is, so uh, the knife I have with it isn't here, but I have a Spyderco PM2 in CPM 10V. And oh, okay. 10V is basically really close to Maximet in edge retention, but okay. with a little more toughness. So uh, okay. for me on the PM2, it's my favorite steel they've ever made it in. River's Edge Cutlery did an exclusive in it. Um, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome mm. steel for everything that I like in a steel right. for an EDC knife. Mm -hmm. But like, it, there are really cool steels out there. Why, yeah. why keep using CPM? Make it more unique if it's going to be like a really small batch or whatever it is. I mean, that's right. that's what's going to make that thing even more desirable when they stop making that specific knife. Yeah. You know? and there are times like this Runt Five is 154 cm right. which protec mm -hmm. has used protec a lot for a long time yeah they're starting to use less of it and use more 20 cv 20. but mm -hmm. this one is a hand ground mirror polished yeah, mike cool. erie hand done knife right yeah. and he did this is one of 50 of them in this setup and then there's a couple other handle materials and two other blade shapes so i don't know maybe he did 150 200 yeah. blades I get it. If he's hand yeah. grinding and mirror polishing that many it's knives for a small production fun. run, then yeah, 154 CM is easier and it's more artistic. But if you're talking about a knife like an 8020, which is a freaking bruiser of a knife, yeah. I built to take a CPM 154, I, not doing it, you know, no. like, <laughs> yeah, pick something that suits the knife. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I'm really excited to get my hands on that, by the way. I mean, like, <laughs> I want to carry that, feel it, and then see what all the hype is about. And then um, hopefully I can get my hands on a 20.5. Like, that's the next yeah. thing that I'm trying to get a hold of as well. It's what I can do is maybe, uh, like, tomorrow, I'll just put this in the mail to you, and then I'll just get it back from you while I'm up there. That way oh, yeah. you can have it for the couple weeks until we meet up. Yeah, if Save you don't mind. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Be awesome. Or whichever totally but. the yeah that's one of those knives that 
as much as I miss it every time that it's gone. I love loaning to people because it's yeah. so unique and it elicits a reaction. I'm, and I'm like, scared, man. I'm gonna want one even more. Um, I've handled it once, and yours is the only one that I've ever handled. Period. In terms of a shark box, so um, that will be very interesting. Um, in terms of actually like handling it for a longer duration than you know 10 20 minutes or whatever it was yeah so. no if, if you borrow it you've got a beat on it that's the rule oh it's, yeah <laughs> it's not as a tank okay it's not well, just a not just a handle it at you your realize desk i'm in utah and we do a lot of camping right now. <laughs> perfect i've batoned with it go for it wait awesome uh, um so as time goes on and you continue to like make content for the channel and you continue to have new grails and all that kind of stuff what do you think like the future is for your channel? Do you think you just kind of keep plugging along making the same types of videos or is there like another avenue you'd like to explore kind of what's yeah. the, the future vision of everyday? Yeah. Videos? So um, I want to just get into all EDC gear. I know it's very knife focused, but like I want to just kind of expand the horizon in that sense, um, even mm -hmm. into overlanding gear. I've talked about it in a couple videos. Um, you know, I just got that forerunner and um, put tires so on it and um, I, I want to see what I can do with it because I'm looking into getting a rooftop tent. Um, I want to get a pretty decent roof rack on there, you know, uh, a light setup as well as like um, rock sliders, a lift kit, all that stuff. And it would just be really fun to make side videos on that on the channel. Um, yeah. And basically, you know, go out and, uh, you know, get a drone and, and maybe just film me going up a hill or whatever it may be. So, um, overlanding you know, with, is a sick hobby. I, uh, yeah. I've been to overland expo and it, with my last job, well, not my last job, but sure. two jobs ago now, yeah. I worked for an aftermarket parts company that did stuff mostly for Honda and, right. uh, actually entirely for Honda, but we, started doing some kind of overland focused products partially because Honda was pushing it for their like SEMA builds and stuff. Right. And we were already doing lift kits and things that kind of ran parallel to it. Sure. And uh, so we ended up doing a couple SEMA builds that also went to overland expo and like kind of traveled a little bit with these cars, but mm -hmm. that whole scene I spent like five days or however long the whole oh, show is so at sweet. overland expo. <laughs> so and oh, it was epic you know like there are people spending millions of dollars on crazy unimog yeah. builds and then there's yeah. budget dudes who have like a beat up old mitsubishi that they've yeah. like rhino lined the whole thing. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and i love that world is super fun to me because it blends cars and it blends like hiking and being outdoors and it blends off-roading and it blends sure. camping <laughs> right. and it's like it brings so many things that I like together. That's rad. Yep. Exactly. And I, yeah, that's kind of what I want to get into. Um, and then it, of course, keep upping my production quality. Um, you know, I, I went and got a camera for like, what was it, 800 bucks? And I've been using that for the past year now. And I think I can keep scaling that forward now that I've kind of nailed down like, Hey, this is what type of lens I want to use the light setups. Um, I just want to increase the production level. And I think right mm -hmm. now my biggest restriction is time. Um, I don't have a ton of time to make the type of quality of videos that I do want to make. Um, I have to split it up within like increments during the day or whatever it may be. So that's kind of like the future thing. I want to start posting like two videos a week. And mm. that's a goal that I want to hit if I ever do this full time, um, two to three videos a week. But We'll see where it goes. You know, in a year, um, I'm at what, like 8,600 subscribers or something like that. And I think if I keep just chugging along for now, um, it'll eventually progress. So I dig it. Yeah. I think, yeah. I don't know, in this realm specifically, to try to do it any other way than like kind of slow and steady. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just haven't witnessed any channel that has been able to overnight become successful to the point where monetizing on YouTube can be yeah. real, real income for them. It's not like a yeah, thing in I, the EDC world. Right. And I totally remember asking you that. I was like, Hey dude, what do I need to do um, to get monetized? I, I totally remember that. Or like, how long did it take you? Because like I was shooting that shooting for that as a goal. And then I eventually hit it. And I was just like, I need attention. He's the first person I got to let know because he's the only person I asked about this. So um, I love it. Yeah.
Yeah, I think that's an interesting one too. Like I've had a number of friends who have been hesitant to monetize the channel. Sure. And I get it. I mean, in some ways I can see if you did and you just wanted it to be a hobby, then it might feel like you you might inadvertently start thinking of it as kind of a job. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think other people just feel like they just want the content to be free. They don't want people to have to watch ads, whatever it is. Right. right. But for me, it was such a no brainer. It was like, it's like I watch ads on other people's videos. Like, yeah. okay, well, yeah, it's no big deal. I mean, it is really though. <laughs> and then if your and, content's worth it, then people are going to watch it. Like, right. And if like the amount of time and energy that I put into it, uh, there's no way I even make close to enough compared to if I was working right. minimum wage somewhere else, I'd be a richer man in right. terms of what I'd bring in than exactly. doing this. My goal is eventually to have it become more substantial over time when the mm -hmm. audience builds and when people watch more and as my content improves and all that stuff hopefully will come over time. But it's like, of course I'm going to monetize. Like, yeah, I, I have to make yeah. my time a little bit more worth it, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't I'll know. Pay for the hobby too. Ad button. I mean, if you look at it that way, right. And, um, yeah. The money that I spend on knives are typically earned money from reoccurring from like, you know, affiliate links off of TikTok mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Um, and that's how I would kind of budget it or else I would be uh, really down the depth, like the the debt hole in that sense. You know, I, I would be maxing yeah. out every single credit card I had. Um, so I've been able to kind of like just organize it that way. And I'm totally with you on that. Like monetization is sweet. And I think it's a benefit to both parties. You know, if you want to see this cool content, then just watch this ad for me or whatever it may be. Right. So, Or if you want to be upset that there's ads on your videos, then for like a couple bucks a month, you can have a YouTube subscription yeah, yeah, that, exactly. you can that do doesn't that. have ads. Yep, and exactly. I do that. I don't like watching yeah. ads. So I have right. the one more so because my daughter, if, mm -hmm. like, well, she's on. <laughs> if yeah, there's yeah. ads, it, it can be disruptive more so when right. she was little. But yeah, mm -hmm. like, it, it's not that expensive to just have an account and then you and don't then, have to watch the Yeah, ad. you don't have to watch it. It still gives the content creator, um, you know, that ad revenue, even if, yep. you know, they, they have that enabled, which is pretty cool too. So um, yeah. yeah, I do encourage that as well as far as like doing the YouTube subscription service. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so here's an interesting one because I think we've talked a little bit about this in the group, but sure. you are one of the content creators who I've noticed. Don't take this the wrong way. Sure. But you say like, please like, and subscribe all that kind of yes. stuff. And I, yeah. I genuinely mean, don't take it the wrong way because I know most yeah. people do it and I don't have disrespect mm -hmm. for other people doing it. I just can't, it's not me to say it, but sure. um, how do you feel that that like, does that actually help YouTube's algorithms? Because I've been told by someone, I don't recall who, somebody told me mm -hmm. YouTube can tell if the person verbally says that in the video and they boost the videos more if they have said it and I still won't try it, but. Is that something I, you've heard or is I that just because other people say it? I have no idea. I mean, like I just say it because I'm inviting um, a viewer to come back to watch my Ooh. other content. So, um, and I try to say it in a really nonchalant way. Not, It's not like, hey, you need to subscribe to me right now or smash that or subscribe button or whatever. Yeah, it's just like, hey, if you enjoyed this content, then go ahead, hit subscribe, put that notification bell on and you'll know when that next video is live. If you didn't enjoy it, mm -hmm. then go ahead, dislike the video. Either way, it's going to, you know, show that people are disliking and liking the video. It doesn't really matter. Um, but if you mm -hmm. genuinely enjoyed the content that I created, then you know, subscribe and it, that helps me out. You get to see more cool content and you'll see me progress. And that's how I view it in that sense. Um, I don't really look like, I've never researched into the YouTube algorithm, which is kind of funny mm -hmm. because in, on the TikTok algorithm, it's completely different. I know the ins and outs, you know, how to get um, a video actually posted versus it getting taken down and all that stuff. But with YouTube, I think I'm just pouring a lot more of my like passion into it versus TikTok where it's like, okay, I just want to get my name out there, period. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I can look back at the analytics. I just can't remember. I, I think in every single video, I'm just like, hey, hit subscribe or whatever it may be. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. If I've ever said it, it's been joking about saying it when I've said it. No, I've so seen it, man. I've always YouTube seen it. it <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, a lot of the times whenever I do say that, your your um, voice pops up in one of your videos in my head. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, Jake's going to hate me on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Kind of 
so that actually brings up another interesting topic of like focusing on the analytics. I'm terrible at it. Sure. I don't really pay much attention. Sure. Um, but I was having a conversation with my wife tonight over dinner. Uh, yeah. We Every Wednesday night, my daughter's in an art class for an hour and a half. So we pick a different right. restaurant until we run out of them, which hasn't happened yet. But right in that yeah. neighborhood, we'll just walk to whatever's close. And we'll eat there and try it out. Anyway, we were talking about Instagram and the algorithms right now because what mm -hmm. she does is super Instagram focused. Um, and so she brought up a point. I can't remember whether it's one of her friends who was telling her or something, but she had heard that right now, the way that Instagram is favoring content, it doesn't help to post daily in terms of like an image post, which I've been posting daily. I haven't missed a day. I, I'll get one up tonight, but I haven't missed one since just before I started my channel. It's been over a right. year and I've noticed that like six months ago, the amount of traction I would get. I'm not that kind of guy who's like, it's they're shadow banning me. It's conspiracy. I don't, sure. it's not a big deal, but I have, yeah. I do get less likes now with more followers than I did just a few months ago. And I've noticed that other pages who do a lot of reels right now seem to be kind of on an uptick. And mm -hmm. from what she was saying, if you post like three times a week images and do reels every single day, supposedly that's the best way to grow right now. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to do reels. <laughs> um, yeah. I, yeah. It can get tedious. I don't know if it's worth reels it to me. Exactly like TikTok, but um, yeah. I, so I've been seeing that same type of fluctuation that you're feeling, but I, I post every two days, two to three days. Mm. So um, I don't think it's like the frequency um, in all honesty with the Instagram algorithm, but more so like, Hey, the, the entire like knife EDC community is taking the, the blow of that impact. So mm. I'm not sure what it is. Um, you know, I posted a couple of video or sorry, uh, images of the Benchmade auto fact or the fact auto. And those things blew up. Like, you know, I was used to about 500 likes to like 700 likes or whatever. And then those ones got like mm -hmm. 2,500, 3,000 likes. And I was just like, what What just happened? And yeah. um, sometimes I, you catch a wave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it's, it's confusing. So I don't even really look at those numbers a ton anymore, except, you know, like realizing, oh, okay, well, this image didn't do as well as the other. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it's weird, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess you're feeling the same Maybe thing. Maybe I'll have probably. to. Yeah. I'm gonna have to try doing reels every day for real and see what happens. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I think you post that um, that video of you throwing the Shire off the the ledge, and it got like some crazy traction. Yes, that on, on reels. Yeah, yeah, it's got. Oh, look, it's over two hundred thousand, which is funny because I basically have, I think I've posted two reels ever, and that's one of them. Smile without your oh, that's not it. That's awesome. Hold on. Yeah, so I posted one of the uh adamas the mini adamas and crew wear yeah. just me mm -hmm. opening a box that it says not to cut sure. with a knife and that has 3568 views the mm -hmm. strider going into the canyon says it has 160k views That's um, so fun, and those are my <laughs> only two and yeah. it's like yeah. what's hilarious too especially about that strider one the clone strider is mm -hmm. i posted a video on youtube shortly after showing the clip of me before throwing it in, showing the knife, saying this is a clone that I bought as a joke years ago. Sure. Didn't know what the best way to get rid of it was or whatever. So I figured yeah. this would be a funny way to like get rid of it and elicit a reaction. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I also tried to get down there to get it and couldn't get down into that spot in the canyon. So I did like a follow-up uh, video about that. Sure. That has, I don't know, at most 2,000 views, probably not even that. Might not have right. even broken 1,000. Yeah. And so there's like a 100 and... 50 something thousand people that believe potentially that that was a real strider and never oh, yeah. got and then the, you like, have my following that. a real strider going <laughs> yeah, down in the canyon yep and um i don't know if you went through my tiktok um video so good. there's so many people freaking out like the actual edc enthusiasts in my community they were just like just off the wall they're no. like that is a that is a strider what is going on here and i like there were so many comments that i couldn't right. even like keep up so um, I think that video hit 850k before it got taken down because of TikTok. Yeah. So. Yeah. It. Well, that was one of the few videos that I tried putting on TikTok with knives in it because I had just already taken it. I was like, yeah, I'll try putting it on TikTok. And mine lasted mm -hmm. like less than a day. 
and then you yeah. stayed up for forever. And I was like, I, I, yeah, I think maybe yeah. because most of my videos have gotten taken down, TikTok just immediately sees I post something I'm like, yeah, probably not, bub. <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was talking to Ray over at um, Everyday City Carry. I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. have chatted, but um, yeah, we're talking about podcast twice. Oh yeah, sweet. So yeah, you guys have. I've watched that. Um, but essentially, the the TikTok al algorithm is really weird. Um, like if you ever, do, I get this question all the time, and I just need to make a video on it. But essentially, mm -hmm. if you uh, post a video of you performing a task with the knife, it is just it's fine. Dangerous like, it, acts. No, it's, it won't it won't flag it right. Um, which no, is what? weird. It doesn't flag it if you're using it in a task. So for okay. example, like you'll you'll get a lot of people that cook. Um, this is how I kind of just like thought of this. I was just like, okay, well, you get a lot of chefs that are showing them like cut meat or whatever it may be. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to just test this across 25 videos and just cut fruit or vegetables. Mm. Every single one of those videos were posted. No problem. Now, um, mm. when they hate it, it's like when you actually just open up the blade and then do nothing else with it. That's when TikTok's like, okay, yeah, that's a dangerous act. And it's like, yeah, they uh, hate when I do my knife twirl. That's for sure. Yeah, right. I mean, um, that could actually get a lot of traction. I mean, on reels. I don't know if you've posted on reels, but um, I, I, apparently for the next week, I'm gonna try. <laughs> you you should give it a shot, man. Uh, reels is a really good way to do it. I did. I haven't really posted a ton on reels just because most of my demographics on TikTok and that's my short form mm. content. But um, I feel like that she is onto something in terms of what your wife said. So yeah, they're, they're I mean, it makes sense because Instagram that's their newer feature yep. in terms of ways mm -hmm. to post i think she was also saying they want you to like go live once a week too so it's like if you're doing reels wow. constantly if you're going live once a week and then posting can kind of take a back seat but don't stop like was kind of the yeah. vibe i got from it and i was sure. like i mean maybe i'll try it for a little bit and see what happens it's not that i need to be on instagram for growth or like to hit a right, certain right. number there Let's see if it like test but, it out you know Mm -hmm. Well, I also, I do specifically want to hit 10 K because I really would yeah. like to just have the swipe up feature it drives me nuts that oh, I don't, yeah. Yeah, it's super nice. I don't know why they put that limit on it. It's like, I, I don't know. I, I can yeah, verify totally that I'm connected to my YouTube right. channel. I already have a business profile. Why mm -hmm. can I not swipe up for a link? Yeah, exactly. And I didn't, I actually, I think I went past 10 K and then I realized, oh wait, there's like a paperclip clip icon there and i was like what is this mm -hmm. and i tried it for the first time i was like wait a minute this is unlocked mm -hmm. like when did that happen <laughs> but i guess yeah. it's 10k right um is when that happens but. yeah supposedly and i just want to be able to link like if i do a video that's pertinent to my following on instagram sure. i want to be able to put in my stories swipe up to go to the video or if somebody yeah. that i know and care about shares something that i think people will want to see i would like to like not click the link in my bio it, it's extra steps up. for no reason. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, I get that. It's super uh, yeah. easy right there. So I can understand like a bunch of tiny troll accounts. You don't want everyone mm. to have that feature because it'll be abused. But right. if an account is aged and in good standing and right. you know, all that stuff, like why, mm -hmm. why can't I just apply for it and you give it to me? Why do I have to hit 10K? It's like the know. little verification badge thing. I think that's total BS. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I think you have to be at like, you know, 500,000 followers or something to even have it pop up to qualify. Yeah. So yeah, that's one of those things where it's like my, so much of my life revolves around social media and I also yeah. despise so much about it, but like, yeah. but I love parts of it. Like social media, if used correctly, I think can bring entertainment and connections that are real. Friendships. Like, I've, yeah, yeah I, there's, exactly. there's a lot of good that can come from it. And Especially like I, I just talked with Chris about this in the episode about like the grog and some of the, mm -hmm. the group chats that I'm in where I don't know, as like a man <laughs> in my yeah. late twenties in today's world, I don't have many like close dude friends who I can talk to. Like I do my dude friends, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. so having yeah a resource that, that's only happening because of social media. So there's a lot that I, yeah, I no, I totally it, feel that too. And, um, you know, I've disconnected from a lot of my 
um, IRL friends because of the grog. I like to talk in a more mature or like read in a more mature audience in that sense. I'm in my mid 20s, so I'm not too far off from you. But a lot of the guys in my age range, they're just trying to figure out their lives. And I'm just like, okay, I want to talk to guys that are like, you know, like they got their stuff together. You know, you've got a family. Right. Chris is a family. Um, Ricky's on it on his way doing his thing. And it's just great, you know, like having that resource and then also just having it available um, and not have to you yeah. know, plan an entire night to go hang out with a friend or whatever it is. It's just a little more convenient when you're, you know, doing your thing. So, yeah. To be fair, I don't think I necessarily have it together. And I know a lot of people with families who don't have it together, but oh, I yeah, totally no, get what I mean, you're saying. Uh, yeah, for sure. And um, I like, are you, are you doing this full time now just with beer gear and all that stuff? Yeah, or, kind of. So yeah. it, I treat it like my full time job. I'm definitely putting in as much time as sure. I have at any full time job before. Yeah. But I also, with my wife's content creation, I do most yeah. of her photography. So, right that's what makes us the money. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what awesome. al okay. allows me to be able to do this. Yeah. The The benefit of making this full time is we're able to accept more campaign work for her. So, Oh, that's great. Yeah. Because I'm more available and my schedule right. for this, I can do whenever like you can travel the, the reality, is, all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. The reality mm -hmm. is this takes the backseat to that, but, usually I can handle all that stuff pretty quickly. So most days I'm doing bearded gear stuff pretty much all day. And then the goal is, so obviously as following increases, then money will increase Oh yeah. right now. It's, it's like side hustle money. It's not nothing, but it's, yeah, yeah. I couldn't I live like off of bearded gear. Yeah. Um, but if I'm able to, if the left concepts launch goes well and people like the Avant and we can continue with that, um, mm -hmm. then eventually I'll be able to start drawing money out of that Avenue. And then I'll probably ultimately diversify as well. Do some stuff that's just bearded gear, um, right. designs and it, yeah, work in a couple of ways from a design standpoint, both with Ryan at left and then individually. And if I can do that with content creation being kind of like the stable, steady, like monetization right. money just rolls, mm -hmm. then it could foreseeably be like a long-term something I actually kind of career yeah. focus into, but that could also like the balance could change because if I'm successfully designing knives and marketing them and selling them, then sure. the time for content creation will inherently be less. Mm -hmm. So it, down the road, it may turn into instead of daily uploads, it might be yeah. a couple of weeks plus I a don't podcast, even know how do it, that man. kind of thing. Yeah, every single day for the past however long it's been, it's just like upload, upload, or two, three uploads. I mean, I'm just like, dude, how does it over work? a year? I haven't missed a <laughs> yep. day. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just awesome. Um, to actually today is my anniversary on YouTube. I think my oh, first what? video on June second. So no yeah, way. that's been pretty crazy. And um, yeah, dude, I I just I admire the the dedication you have um, and the amount of time you put into all of your videos as well. So uh, well, I think Ricky I and I worked as much as you do. I, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm lucky that it, it panned out this way. Cause there oh, was a bit sure. where I went back to work. Um, mm -hmm. The job I that I was that. working right before the pandemic hit, I was back and in person for a little bit. And it was like, well, I, I guess I wasn't fully in person. I was doing most of it remote, but I had to do mm -hmm. some stuff in person because there's some physical element to it. Right. And it was like, I, just getting one video up a day was that was real difficult in that time yeah, for sure. And uh, I don't know. I've been lucky that my circumstances have been such that I can make it work to go in this way. And I do so much less work per video than you do. Like my editing is oftentimes just clipping the beginning and the end yeah, second yeah. off where like where I'm turning on the camera and then sometimes I slap on some B roll Usually it's just yeah, a yeah. Bit. I notice it. I notice the B-roll and I, I love it when you throw that stuff in just by the yeah. way. When <laughs> I have time, yeah. I totally, I do it. Mm -hmm. if, if I've got time and I can make it work, then I enjoy doing it because I do think it adds a good visual element. But right. I also, the frequency at which I post, there are times when I get too busy yeah, to literally like, take yep, the few minutes to take the knife somewhere else, mm -hmm. wipe it down, 
shoot it and then add that amount to editing, which is normally just takes a minute. Now it takes 20, like all that stuff adds up. Yeah, and if I'm doing that for a bunch of videos, it's crazy. Sometimes that's it why happen. I'm, that's why I'm so impressed with um, how frequent um, you post in that sense, because when I go to edit a video, it's like four times longer to edit that video than the actual filming time. So I have to delegate, you know, um, like an A day on Tuesday to film B roll mm -hmm. and then a B day um, to film the A roll. Um, in that mm. sense. And it gets pretty crazy, man. Like, um, I don't know the, the type of quality. That I want. Oh, oh no, you're back. You're back. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what happened there, but yeah. You're saying the type of quality when you cut out on my end. So. Yeah, it's just the type of quality that I want to eventually scale up to. Um, it, I just want to do this full time. That's that's just a dream and passion that I have um, behind me. And I think we can eventually get there, but we'll yeah. see. Well, I think honestly, like the style you have for your videos from a like, cinematography standpoint is vastly superior to what I do. You, the amount of focus and attention and detail and the actual filming and videography itself, like composition, it's all way above my level. And there aren't that many channels that are putting that much work into each video. Um, there are a lot of channels who probably put about as much work into each video as I do, and they only post once or twice a week. Like the right, fact that yeah. you're able to put so much effort into each video and each piece of content that goes up makes a big difference. And I think there's really two ways to go about it. Like you could become very successful because you put in all that effort or hopefully <laughs> for someone yeah. like me, it's possible by, yeah. by using consistency right, and right. trying to like, I don't know. To me, I mean, it's look important at Com to complex. He does it and uh, he's, yeah. he's made a name for himself in the knife world. So I, totally. I have no doubt you'll be there. Um, that's, that's not going to be a problem. I hope you're right. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I would love for it to just keep moving onward and upward. Um, and things are good. It, it's funny. I'm yeah. in this mode right now too, where I've already told myself, I'm going to let myself not post while I'm in Utah. Yeah, I saw that in your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm having like this senioritis moment where I know mm -hmm. there's a break coming and right. I'm not unmotivated. I you're still doing enjoy break doing the it, break. <laughs> but I, no, it's, I, I'm not even having a break. I just like, because I know it's coming. Yeah. It takes me like five more minutes to get into filming mode. Oh, <laughs> where yeah, I'm, like, sure. <laughs> where I'm like ready to go because I'm like, yeah. it's coming soon. I'm going to like, I don't know. It's weird how much I'm looking forward to it for being something that I enjoy. But I think that's also kind of a life lesson too. Like you could do something you love completely, yeah. but you do it too much and you can get, burnt out on anything that and i totally feel you on that one yeah um, it's I mean, not even uh, like a not a burnt out in the sense that i like even want to stop it's just that right. i know i'll actually benefit from a break <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah i'm having yeah. so much fun i don't want to slow down but i know if i let myself slow down and regroup then i'll probably be better afterwards for having done that oh but yeah, yeah i'm having like this Absolutely. weird senioritis thing <laughs> i've had i've had a lot of those things with the youtube channel where I'll, I'll skip like a couple weeks or three weeks or whatever it may be and um those dead set like periods um i'm really like reflecting on myself and um this was something that was kind of deep like two months ago um ashley and i had broken up because of it because i was just so zoned in into making the best possible content that mm -hmm. um it got to the point where i was just neglecting her in that sense and then we broke up we're back together now. I don't know if you knew that. Um, and I knew you were saying yeah. girlfriend again. And so yeah. I assumed it mm -hmm. was the same girl. Otherwise something moved real yeah, fast. Yeah. But, so, yeah. yeah, exactly. And um, we worked on a lot of those details. We've been back together for a couple months now and it's been a lot better in that sense, you know, That's with good. Time management and everything. And um, yeah, I think, I think if you take a break, just uh, when you come up here, we'll hang out or do whatever you want <laughs> um, and just enjoy yourself at that point. And then, you know, you've got stories to tell when you get back onto your channel. So that's true. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, I imagine there will still be some videos going live 
while I'm gone because it's me. So oh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll calendar. You, got somehow, a MacBook but, deal, so you can be portable, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, so I, I'm going to commit to myself that I won't like edit or post any content while I'm up there. If I've gotten oh, some gotcha, stuff yeah. done before, yeah. then like, I'm sure I'll want to look at comments when I've got some downtime or whatever, but I, oh, I won't be on my laptop for anything other than like, I oh, just oh, want oh, to be oh, doing it, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I won't be editing. I won't be sitting there watching videos process for upload. Like mm -hmm. I'm just going to be where I'm at <laughs> while yeah, I'm there. Yeah, if you film stuff, I mean, uh, just save it and then edit it when you get home afterwards. Cause it's your birthday, right? Mm -hmm. What the, the time that you're coming up here? Yeah. The 24th. So we'll get there the 23rd and then yeah, that second day will be my birthday. And we're staying for a couple days after that. Um, right. So I think, yeah, we stay in that place until like the 28th. A place you got is that is prime. Dope, that, right? Like at the bottom of Bell Canyon, you have no idea how beautiful that hike is, man. Like if if I I'm can make it up to. ready, but um, basically at the very top, there's like three ginormous waterfalls. Um, and it's more, it's not like a, um a trail at the very top. You literally have to like rock climb through. Those. Perfect. Um, I think that you would enjoy that. But <laughs> have you ever yeah, hiked man. in Utah ever? Or I haven't. So. I kind of like growing up i always went to lake powell and lake powell is technically oh, sure. in utah and so yeah. i've done some hiking there but it's like red rock stuff yeah it's completely different. never in the salt lake area and sure. even that lake powell was i haven't been basically in adulthood it was like all as a kid right, um, right. but my brother lived up there for a while my sister lives way up north um in now i forget Morgan? the name of it or that's right outside of logan um oh yeah i have no idea i don't know anyway yeah. um sure. but yeah i haven't i i hear like tons of people tell me i need to do mount tipinogos i would love to um yeah the last trip while i was down there was still all covered in snow so that wasn't really a thing i but, was just up there um were literally you? last weekend and it, it was nice man yeah it, Killer. it's a super nice hike um i've, I've heard that it's really long but not crazy steep it's like a lot of distance um i from what i can remember it was the opposite of that i remember oh. it was shorter and it was insanely steep um i mm. think the hike is three miles or something like that which oh. shouldn't be that hard for you at all but uh um, yeah yeah, but when you get to the top, like you gotta go explore those caves. It's awesome up there if you go in there and make some time. But yeah, I think being there a few extra days this trip is gonna be better for doing things like that. On our last trip, yeah. we like didn't even leave the Verbo basically because oh, yeah. we were just hanging out, having fun. But this time sure. it'll be more of us and more time. And so I'll probably break away with the dudes a couple of times for some good hikes. Yeah, it'll be awesome for sure killer man so i feel like yeah we're already coming up on two hours and i know you've got a, a hard out but yeah before we go um tell me a couple of knives that are like grails for you right now because i know you've mentioned there's a few things that are sure. kind of on your radar maybe like 800 dollars cap but like what are the things that most have your attention in that range because i always love um it. i you know i've been eyeballing the jaeger um you know i've seen your review on it and it seems to be a really good knife and i oh, think yes. I, I can't remember if you brought it but i didn't even know what it was when you brought it down here um yeah i think it was loaned out when i was there i think oh, it was gotcha. with kyle so i don't think i handled it but um we'll i'm trying to hunt down weeks. one of those not sure how expensive those are um like what is it like Four or five hundred? I, I don't even know. Maybe six. I believe they retailed for three fifty. Oh, okay, that's not too on bad. secondary. They're more like four fifty, five hundred bucks from what I've been seeing. Gotcha. Uh, supposedly, there's a retailer who soon will have a batch of exclusive ones. Um, I'm gonna not say that out loud on here because I'd rather <laughs> keep that a little bit of a secret. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Supposedly that's happening. It's not that well kept of a secret right now, anyways. But gotcha. I believe that's coming. So I don't know how many they'll have, but I know it's right. a cool configuration and there are some more. And then I'm sure he's already considering if not actively working right. on another batch because people want that knife. Yeah. I, I want it. I mean, <laughs> and I'd, yeah, I'm excited to see that thing, but um, that the 80, 20, and then also the Arius. Um, when you had, yes. when you, when I felt the Arius, it was just like, oh, my goodness, he was not lying. This thing, 
it feels like the um, Koenig sports cars inside a knife. Like, no joke, though. Um, yeah. It's just that thing is amazing. So I missed out on the other times just because of financial reasons or whatever it was when they dropped. Yeah. But um, I think I'll eventually get my hands on one. For sure. Yeah, a lot of people right now are buzzing about the mini areas, which by the time this goes live, people will finally have in their hands because at Blade Show, they're lottoing. No, they're what's well, not lotto. They're um, auctioning some of them. So that'll be interesting to yeah. see. I don't know. They might lotto some auction, some others, but I bill and on Koenig Knives profile as well. They've been sharing pictures of the mini areas with some interesting milling patterns. They look a little bit ah, different. Okay. Um, I don't know. That's one of the biggest reasons why I'm bummed. I'm not going to be at blade show is to not have <laughs> a chance on a mini areas. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to find some way soon to hopefully snag one, yeah, but absolutely. I couldn't. That sounds it. interesting. Do you, do you know what the blade um, length is on that guy in comparison? So the regular areas, I believe sits right at like three and a half inches. I think the mini is like three flat. So it's quite God. a bit smaller. Um, what I'm going to be most curious about, honestly, is with the handle profile staying basically the same, but getting smaller, the ergos on the areas are one of my favorite things about it. I yeah. wonder how it's going to feel ergonomically. And I, yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like, People have been asking for a mini Arius for as long mm -hmm. as I've even been aware of the Arius mm -hmm. because that's for some people it's like love the knife it's just a little too big for me that's a thing I hear a lot right it's got to be terrifying to be Koenig right now and to be finally releasing the thing yeah. that everyone's been asking for and mm -hmm. their hype is through the roof I personally think it's justified but the Arius is such a beloved knife that if the mini isn't absolutely every bit as phenomenal then right. I, that's got to be kind of scary but it's so exciting sure, that they're sure. finally making it and it's going to be in people's hands and yeah plus they've learned so much mm -hmm. on the areas they're on gen 4 now um, right, right i think they're on gen 4 like batch 5 like they've made they a lot of people. that knife. Yeah, so they know more now than they did when they started with the areas so the mini should be starting from a really good place i don't know it's going to be wild to see it's probably gonna nail it in the price point too um <laughs> i'm not sure how much yeah. they're going to be but like when they actually put out the retail versions i think yeah i haven't seen pricing i would imagine it won't be more than a standard areas and right right if you can get a standard areas on a drop they're not crazy for what they are um secondary can be pretty wild on them but. I haven't looked at the secondary prices at all. Um, I'm just don't. waiting. <laughs> so, <don't. laughs> I won't. It'll but, scare yeah, you off. The, the, the thing that like I remember the most is the noise that, that knife makes in hand when you're just maneuvering it. Not not even the action. It just right. has this like noise, like similar to like the anthem, but even yeah. more like defined. Um, I totally know what you're saying because it's you can feel that, that noise right there is just dude <laughs> you can feel how internally milled it is from yeah, outside the hollow sound yeah that's just crazy. Yeah. yeah it's not hollow like tinny either though it's got like yeah. this i don't know i it, freaking yeah. adore it's like this a block it feels like a block of titanium but it's not and it's actually way lighter than what it actually looks like it is so yep. <laughs> yeah i'll eventually get my hands on one of those um when when funds come in but we'll, we'll good see about that. how about you i mean uh what's your current grail list <sighs> That's, you a, the sigil, that thing yeah, that's the tough one. So the sigil has only been my grail. Like this, this is a custom Monroe sigil. This is not yeah. a microtech sigil. Oh, this, okay. so I've wanted a microtech sigil ever since I reviewed a loner one that was towards the beginning of my channel. It's been a long time. Now. Right. Right. Loved that knife. And in my opinion, it is the greatest knife that microtech has ever made. I right would debate that for hours if anybody yeah. wanted to go yeah, on the other sure. side like the, there's nothing microtech has ever made that i think comes close mm -hmm. and i've hoped that they would do another run of them eventually or bring it back in some right. way i've hoped to find one for a decent enough deal that i would jump on it the only time i ever came close to getting one um uh, i found out that it was an aluminum framed one and i had thought it was titanium and that's why i was like oh that's why it's so cheap uh, um but yeah, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the titanium ones that I could find for a decent deal were just like really hard users. 
And right. so I wanted one that felt kind of unmolested. And, and anyway, yeah, so totally. for a long time, I've been hunting a sigil in general. And mm -hmm. then just like a month or two ago, all of a sudden I started to see Monroe was making a new batch of, I think this is technically a Mark IV. I think he's done three iterations sure. before this. Yeah. Um, and I was trying on every drop. <laughs> He'd post <laughs> on Instagram, sure. hey, some just hit the site, and then it would be a mad dash, and they'd be gone immediately. I was always right. a little bit late. And they were table price, 1200 bucks, which is stupid expensive, right? Dude. <laughs> But then yeah. I like join this Facebook group and I'm trying to watch for if anybody's selling any in there. And I only saw one or two move ever since he's started making these. Sure. This is number five, by the way. Um, and each time that they would move, they were like double table, like stupid, stupid, expensive mm -hmm. um, outside of my price range expensive. And then right, I had a right. buddy who got this one and I told him the second I saw that he got it, I was like, dude, if you decide to let it go, please let me know. Can't promise I'll be able to buy it in the moment, but like, let me know. Let me know. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've only been aware that this version existed for, like I said, at the yeah. most a couple of months and it's been yeah. a grail that whole time. It's been the thing I wanted most. I've been watching for mm -hmm. every drop and I had to get it secondary, but from a buddy who could have been much more aggressive on pricing than right, he was, right. which I appreciate. Sure. Shout out to spirited blades. Um, awesome but yeah think, that that yeah. was my most recent grail i don't know what's next because mm -hmm. i just today unboxed the most recent one you know yeah for sure and um i think the first time i saw that was i think chris has one doesn't he yeah he has a microtech yeah. sigil yeah, yeah. My, microtech sigils yeah that thing is that thing is gorgeous too i mean like i love that design that yeah, I, I, would I would love say, still to have a Microtech one as well. But right, right, and I would say that that's up there, but that's unattainable for me right now. Like, mm -hmm. um, like I could probably sell a bunch of my knives and uh, try to get one, but yeah, it's probably like I'm not sure if you're gonna bring that up to Salt Lake, but if you oh, still do with me, yeah, yeah, I totally want to check that thing out. I mean, that thing of course, nice. yes, but um, yeah, man, killer. So we are, yeah, we're right at your kind of limit here, but. Before we dip completely, um, sure. can you tell people who are listening, if you're on YouTube, this will all be linked down below in the description, but yeah. where can people find you? TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, where? Yeah. where's YouTube, Everyday Minimalist? YouTube, TikTok, and then Instagram, all three of them. It's just Everyday Minimalist. So, I mean, if you just look at the little, um, I guess, name tag here, just type that in and you should be able to find it. Perfect. But, That's yeah. simple. So, Everyday Minimalist everywhere. Any underscores or anything people need to be aware of? Um, I think it's just every dot day dot minimalist on um, Instagram, and then you've got just everyday minimalist on YouTube, and then as well as TikTok, just two different words. So killer, super, I love super it. Easy. Yep. Well, Brandon, genuinely, thank you so much for coming on. I know we've been talking about doing this for way too long, and it will not be the last time. Um, oh. Yeah. Plus, I'm excited to see you. It's only a couple of weeks away that I'll be back up there, which is yeah, really man. cool. Um, be super fun. There's something special about knife buddies who you get to see in person. It's not, You're the only knife buddy that I've met in person. So, so much uh, of the hobby is so <laughs> virtual that it's it's really cool. Um, yeah. When you do get to actually shake somebody's hand and give them a hug and they're a, a real oh, sure. human being made of flesh and bone. <laughs> yeah. And then you see Jake, he's like six foot tall. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> He's gotcha, towering man. over me. <laughs> you were not that short. You're good. Um, yeah, for sure. All right, cool, man. Well, thank okay. you so much. Great. We're going to put a bow on this. And uh, yeah, follow Everyday Minimalist and all the places he just described if you aren't already. And we'll see you on the next one.